So the Liam Smith Eubank Jr. rematch is on or back on. It will take place on September 2nd, so it's not far away, at the Manchester Arena, which is the same venue that held the first fight. Personally, I'm glad it's this fight happening and not Conor Ben versus Eubank Jr. Because Conor Ben still hasn't resolved that UCAD situation. And until he does, I don't want to see him back in a boxing ring. I thought it was very bad form by Eddie Hearn and everybody else involved to try and get Conor Ben fighting when he hadn't yet been cleared or banned or served the ban, whatever the case may be. Now, to me, it's going to be interesting to see whether Eubank Jr. can adjust his style, his tactics and so on going into this rematch because it was a terrible loss he suffered last time. He did have some success, most notably in that third round when he started controlling things in the middle of the ring, getting his uppercut going, which is his best punch. But in that fourth round, he got trapped on the ropes. Liam Smith was very accurate with his shots. I know there's all this talk of an elbow, but yeah, I didn't see any elbow. I saw a punch, which when looking from the back of Liam Smith, you know, looking at his back with Eubank Jr. in front of him, it can be made to look like an elbow maybe landed, but from that angle, you can't tell. Because of the way perspective works, it doesn't give you definitive proof from that angle, you see? So anyway, stylistically, Eubank Jr. has always been fighting off the ropes in that way. That's not something that Roy Jones has introduced to his game. Go back and look when Eubank Jr. fought Nick Blackwell way back in the days, long before he was with Roy Jones, he was on the ropes doing those exact same moves. And they worked against Nick Blackwell. Same way when he fought Avni Yildirim, he was on the ropes doing those same moves. It worked against Avni Yildirim. It didn't work against Liam Smith because he's more accurate and more skillful than those two fighters. And that's one of the things I said going into the first fight is that Liam Smith will be the most skilled pressure fighter that Eubank Jr. has fought in his career. Because Eubank Jr. likes pressure fighters, but he's never fought a pressure fighter this skilled. And that proved to be the big difference in that first encounter. So we'll see if Eubank Jr. can adjust. He's going to need to stay in the middle of the ring, off the ropes. I think that goes without saying. As far as whether he boxes Liam Smith long range or gets involved in a scrap, I think he's going to need to mix it up. So occasionally box at long range. In fact, I think primarily he needs to box at long range, but keep it in the middle of the ring. And then here and there, open up in the middle of the ring with combinations, just like he did in that third round. That third round really should be the model for what Eubank Jr. does in this rematch. And it's going to be a difficult thing to keep up over the uh, 12 round duration, because at some stage you would imagine Liam Smith will back Eubank Jr. to the ropes. When that happens, Eubank Jr. needs to hold, just like he did, again, in the Nick Blackwell fight in spots. There were times against Nick Blackwell where I guess he didn't feel like he was in the right position. He didn't have the right angle on Nick Blackwell to get his shots off and avoid being hit. So he just came in low and grabbed Nick Blackwell rather than exchanging. And obviously in boxing, you are allowed to clinch to a certain extent. Excessive clinching is not allowed. So he's going to need to watch it if that's his tactic, because we don't want to see a Lawrence O'Colley type situation. But anyway, I think it's intriguing to see if Eubank Jr. can actually adjust. And as for Liam Smith, well, he just needs to do the same as he did last time. Can he really do much different than last time? I mean, maybe when he's in the middle of the ring, he can be a bit more active and not allow Eubank Jr. to get so many shots off on him, because he did do that in that third round of the first fight. Eubank Jr. was having his way, getting uppercuts off, and Liam Smith was kind of passive. He needs to maybe address that. But other than that, he's going to do the same as the first fight, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It worked first time. He's got a figure it's going to work the second time, and it's up to Eubank Jr. to try and figure something else out. So I'll leave it there. That's the rematch. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. Just briefly to look at the rankings to see where both guys are. Interestingly, Liam Smith is only ranked in the top 15 by the WBO, and Eubank Jr. is only ranked in the top 15 by the WBC. Neither one of them is ranked in any other rankings as far as I can see. As you can see here, Eubank Jr. number four with the WBC, and no other sanctioning body has him ranked anywhere. And the same with Liam Smith. He's ranked number two by the WBO, and no other sanctioning body has him ranked anywhere. So Liam Smith will be looking for a world title shot against Aleem Kanuli. 
He might have to fight an eliminator with Golovkin to get that. And Eubank Jr., if he wins this, he's got people like Selecki above him, Golovkin, uh, this guy whose name I won't try and pronounce. <laughs> uh, if he wants to get a mandatory shot at Charla Welch, good luck with that. Maybe he'll get a mandatory shot against Adames, who is interim champion. In fact, I'm going to make a separate video about Charlo because this Charlo situation is beyond ridiculous. Man's been out in the ring two years. He's not getting stripped to the belt. It is totally absurd. I saw an interview, shout out to G-Man because he posted it in the Element Group. I saw an interview with Mauricio Solomon and Mauricio Solomon and the WBC basically make the rules up as they go along. Again, I'll cover that off in a separate video. So for now, let me know what you guys think about the Liam Smith Eubank Jr. rematch. How does this go? Is it repeat or revenge?